Hey folks, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. It's been a minute, hasn't it? It's been a little while. I've been busy, quite busy. I've had, um, for me, what was fairly significant automotive repairs. Um, I did. We did some work on my wife's car, had it done at a garage, and you know that blew our budget. <laughs> and then I had a wheel bearing go on our minivan. And uh, I decided I was gonna do that myself. And it took me about five days of the amount of work that I could do. Uh, those of you who know me know uh, I've got uh, chronic pain. I've got a number of other health issues. The one that's really holding me back these days is my colitis. Uh, with the way my you know, whole entire digestive system gets messed up, I get about three or four hours per day where I could be doing some work. Uh, otherwise, I'm it's coming out of one end or the other if I need to be impolite. Sorry about that, but there you go. And um, yeah, so that took me a long time. Plus, I don't have the strength I used to have because of how sick I've been for the longest time lately. Yeah, I've been busy, but we've had more. I've had a family gathering again last weekend. Uh, in part, we're preparing for my youngest child, uh, my youngest son. He's getting married in less than three weeks, so we're very busy for all of September as well. Yeah, that's that's some of the stuff that's been keeping me busy lately. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying that's the way it is. That's just the way it is. Uh, I want to announce the winner, the latest winner from my supporters is David L. I did. Uh, I got a, my full list of supporters on Patreon and YouTube memberships, and I go to Google Random Number Generator. And there's 51 supporters, random, random generate a number. It came out to, I think, 14 this time. And David L. from Colorado is the winner. Uh, I've sent David an email and let him know which knives he can choose from. He gets to pick one of the knives or other things that I've reviewed this year that haven't gone to other winners. And there's one or two things that I've kept for myself. And uh, so the list isn't... Um, no, it's actually longer than it usually is because it used to be when I was doing way more reviews per month when I was doing like 10, 12 knives a month, you could pick from one of those. Like last month, I only reviewed two two knives. But he still got a list of like 25 different things to choose from that I've reviewed this year. So hopefully he finds something in there that he likes and I'll send it to him along with some other, you know, prizes, you know, a Canadian Cutting Edge sticker and you know, some other things that uh, I give to every winner as well. So congratulations, David. What are we doing today? Well, you should have seen it on the thumbnail. Oh, I'm dumping them out. I got four knives to do an unboxing on. And if you saw one of my most recent videos, I talked about how I get the knives shipped to me. So yes, I've seen these knives. I got them to me disassembled. Uh, blades and handles were shipped separately. I put them together a couple weeks ago almost three weeks ago now. And uh, so I haven't even looked at them for those that whole time period since I put them together. And now we're gonna take a look at them. So it's not technically my exact first impressions, but I'm gonna give you my, you know, fairly first impressions of these knives. From uh, lowest price to the highest price, the highest cost one is $56 retail. I bought all of these. I bought three of them at White Mountain Knives where you can save 10% with coupon code CCE. And the other one I bought directly from the designer. He's got his own store. We'll look at that one first. So come on down to the tabletop. I'm gonna do almost no editing in this video. Uh, you might have noticed already it's not in 4K, it's only in 1080p. That's gonna save me a lot of time because I don't have time as I explained earlier in the video to do you know, my normal extensive editing and editing in 4K takes even longer, and rendering takes even longer. So, 1080 is what it is for today. Hope that's fine with all of you. Come on down. All right, this is my first knife that RIHE Design has had manufactured for their business. I reviewed, I think, two or three knives where RIHE Design is the designer of the knife. I think those were all Tucson knives. But uh, this is his first one that I've got. Uh, he's got like 10 or 12 of them on his website. RIHEDesign.com, www.RIHEDesign.com. Uh, this is one of the lower priced ones. This is the RH 
288. Uh, we've got access lock, shaft lock, uh, bar lock, whatever you want to call it. You know, the locking system that Benchmade perfected and made popular. Flipper. And we've got a D2 blade. This is on for $39.90 US at his website. Shipping this knife directly into Canada would probably be a problem, which is why, again, I have my knives, you know, shipped to Nebraska, and I've got uh, a great person there who takes them apart for me and mails me the blades and the handles separately. Let's take a look at this knife. We've got sort of a Bowie style blade. We've got a fuller up here. It says Tigend on there. And here it says RHE Design. Oh, maybe this was made for Tigan. Tigan's a brand name, isn't it? I'm not going to edit out my mistakes and stuff. I don't usually make all that many mistakes, but... No, I'm trying to brag, aren't I? Yeah, well, that's not going to get edited out either. <laughs> Anyhow, it says Tigan on there. So I'll double check. Maybe I'll put some text on the screen if Tigan is the brand name. It's got a registered trademark circle by it, so it probably is. And there it says RIHE288. Two eighty six. I got that wrong. It says R H E two eighty six D two R H E design. We've got a f uh, nice swedge up here. We've got some jimping up here. We've got a sharpener's toil, which seems to be placed a little bit too far back, but you can sharpen it a number of times. You probably have well, you've got over a sixteenth of an inch, not quite an eighth of an inch of steel that you could remove from the blade edge before you got into the plunge. So it's not a t it's far from being a terrible, you know, sharpener's toil. Uh, lock bar has got, you know, those pyramid style rings on it. And let's see how well it works. I don't remember. Oh, that's quite good. Oh, alignment's pretty good. Flipper. See if I can just use the lock. It seems fairly free. Let's see if I just let it fall. Yeah, it falls straight down. Uh, very smooth there. Oh, there is a bit of play there. So I probably didn't tighten it up enough when I put it back together. Let me double check this here. Get a T8 out. Okay, there there's just a very little bit of flex in there. Let's see if it works now. Oh, it still works great. So yeah, I just didn't tighten it up enough after putting it back together. The alignment's really good. We've got a pocket clip. It's one side only. They could have so easily have made this with the pocket clip going on either side. Uh, and I think that's just a little bit of a fail because everything else is 100% ambidextrous, but the pocket clip is not. So 10% of the population, you know, who cares about you guys? Us guys, I grew up left-handed. So that's a bit of a fail because they could have so easily, especially since they hid the pocket clip slot in the G10. Uh, could you possibly create a slot on the other side? Yeah, but you shouldn't need to. You shouldn't need to. Like I said, D2 steel, satin finish. Uh, there's a stonewash finish first on the flats and then the satin finish for the grind and the swedge. And... Uh, Fairly thick at the point there. That's definitely over 20 thou at the tip, which is, at a tip, not a bad thing because it keeps the tip more sturdy. Uh, when I do the video review, I'll see how thick it is right behind the grind along most of the cutting edge as well. 3D mill G10. You might be able to see it. Yeah, you can see it. You can see those circles coming in or those ovals, so it's the thickest right there in the middle. Slightly chamfered on the edges. Not very heavy, and of course, when I do the review, I'll give all the specs, and it's working quite well. That's decent. So if you don't mind D2 on a pocket knife, and I don't prefer D2 on a pocket knife. I prefer stainless steel in my pocket because my pockets get hot and sweaty, and so I don't like carbon steel on my pocket knives. But $39.90, G10, D2, Looks like it's well constructed, feels well constructed. 
You could even use this a bit as a sneak up spot. Yeah, it's a decent knife. So I'll take a nice good still picture of that and uh, we'll move on to knife number two. Now, unfortunately, none of the knives in this video are sold in stores in Canada. Sorry about that. This is a Maguron. Uh, I like Maguron knives. This is the MGR 806, and the different colors would be 806, uh, and then a couple letters. Let's take a look at what this is. Okay, there's the, uh, there's their specs. Let me get it up here and focus. There you go, if you want to contact them right there. You can probably buy directly from their store. But uh, like I said at the beginning, I got mine at White Mountain Knives. And they've got this knife... Focus back here. They got this knife six different ways. I don't think they're all available right now, but uh, six different ways. Oh, by the way, all four knives in this video have different steel. So this is kind of good. This is 14C28N, flat slab G10, and you can get this black coated blade. Pretty nice. Or I think it's sandblasted finish, which I don't really like sandblasted finishes on knives. Uh, it's just like you're asking for corrosion, in my opinion. We've got a sort of a teardrop shaped hole there for flicking the blade out and a liner lock. Alignment's really nice. We've got a right and left pocket clip option. I think it comes in three different, four different colors. Two of them have the black blade and four of them have, you know, the satin or the uh, bead blasted finish kind of on the blade. I like there's not a lot of writing all over Maguron. So you got your Maguron logo on the pivot pin and then the steel type just right there. High flat grind. Half of the blade is full flat. You know, there you go. We've got a forward grip right there. There's no jimping up here. That's okay-ish. Uh, decent pocket clip. Backspacer, nice texture on the G10, lockups good, actions smooth. Oh yeah, that's a tight there. There's no blade play there at all. Up and down or either way. Easy to get at the lock release. Now a knife like this might pass through CBSA and come in because uh, they don't like flippers. They they keep most of those. Uh, they might do a centrifugal test and, you know, to see if the blade comes out too easily, but this one's got a pretty good detent. It's wanting to stay in. It, also, it all depends on which CBSA agent you get if you're in Canada. You know, some agents let stuff through and other ones don't because this, I don't think there's consistent training on what knives are allowed and what knives are not allowed. In any case, I'm going to stop talking about CBSA. This knife, yeah, I like this. I wish they had a stone wash finish. I don't really like black coatings or just a satin finish. I don't really like sandblasted finishes on blades. But this is a good size knife. For those of you who are new to my channel, uh, I haven't been saying it much lately. My hands are roughly, they're just barely in the extra large range. So that's comparing to the men's gloves. If you go to buy a pair of men's gloves, I can sometimes squeeze into a large pair, but uh, I can always squeeze into an extra large pair. You know, sometimes there's a little extra room. My pinky's quite a bit smaller than the rest of my hand. But, uh, so it gets cold. Uh, my pinky gets cold. Oh no, poor me. And it's winter time yet. Yeah, the leaves are starting to fall. The weather's changing. It's cool out. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't had our first hard frost yet, but we usually get it in fairly fairly er early in uh, September. And it's it's uh, the day... Come on, focus down here. See that? It's the day after Labor Day. Tuesday, the 5th of September. And, uh, you know, my wife's back at work. Uh, she works with some students. She's a teacher's assistant, an educational assistant. And uh, so, yeah... The house is empty again. And uh, I was talking about the MGR 806, not my wife. There we go. Nice knife. I'm quite happy with this. The price on this, $49.96 at White Mountain Knives. 
Uh, like I said, I couldn't find this at any Canadian store, but you save 10% at White Mountain Knives, makes it $44.96, so just under $45 US. And of course, Americans get free shipping from White Mountain Knives, so yeah, it's literally a $45 knife if you remember to use my coupon code. Uh, by the way, I don't get anything if you use my coupon code, at least not directly. What I get is I've got a deal with White Mountain Knives where he gives me a discount on the knives that I buy as long as I review them and let people know where I bought it. That's all I need to do. And he gives me a reviewer's discount, but I don't get anything from you, you using the coupon codes. That's all good for you. If I got something, you know, you, you might get a 5% discount and I might get a 5% kickback, but that's not generous, is it? Let's give you all the money because, hey, I've already got my discount. <laughs> Anyhow, on to the next knife. Take my notes off of it, and it's a Tucson. Now, I haven't got a Tucson in a while, and this is a fairly new one. This is the TS-505 in black. It also comes in green. Now, this knife is uh, has a mic micarta handle. Hopefully those noises aren't too loud. And it's a coarse micarta. And you can get it in this black. And yeah, it's 3D milled. And of course, two sun knives tend to be quite oily. Clean the oil off when you get it. Uh, not inside, just the stuff on the surface. Uh, the green has got those thick brown kind of threads in it that Two Sun has been using. And uh, it's, it's a decent micarta. I quite like it. David Chen design. And this guy's a flipper or thumb stud. Backspacer. Now the backspacer is maybe micarta. Not sure. Yeah, I think it's micarta as well. And we've got two body pins. A lanyard hole on this guy. Well, we had a lanyard hole on the first one, didn't we? Yeah, the first one had a lanyard hole, uh, but this guy doesn't. It only has got pocket clips. So fairly straight back, and it's a fairly thick blade. That's definitely over an eighth of an inch, and it's got weight to it. This, this is the heaviest knife of the three. Uh, we've got a bit of a thumb riser there with the jimping. We've got a swedge across the top. we got fuller all the way through and out the end. So this is the second knife with a fuller already. Uh, the badging is right there on the main grind. I wish it was somewhere else. It says TS505 N690. So this guy's N690 for those of you who like bowlers, steels, and uh, you like N690, here you go. We've also got a liner lock here. Lockup is very nice there. Let's see, how does it feel? Well, now the blade's going to have fingerprints all over it, but lockup is solid and action is very smooth. Detent is... That's a pretty good detent. Yeah, that's a good detent. I'm a big fan of thumb, thumb stud knives. Oh, there's a lot of access here for the left hand, so that's good. A lot of times, thumb stud knives on liner locks, they tend to have great access for right-handers, but not so good for left-handers. But this one's got a good option. But the pocket clip is right side only. Oh, well, they did it again. I've become fairly ambidextrous, so that's just fine. Now, this is a bigger handle, a bigger, you know, thicker knife. It's not too thick in the handle for me. But uh, if you've got men's small hands, this might be a little bit bigger than you want. Excuse me while I itch my nose. Before I sneeze all over the tabletop and you end up having some... to look at some mess, because I'm not going to edit it out, remember? <laughs> Anyhow, that's a pretty big lanyard hole. Pretty big indeed. And T8 screws, nice... N690, it's a decent stainless steel. Is there enough room here to... If you're really careful, I just don't recommend sneaking up there like that. It could have been made, you know, if some of this came back a little bit more and you removed some of this. The flipper doesn't need to be quite as tall as it is, so it could have been a good forward choil. Now, if you want to make it a forward choice, you, you got to sort of, you know, maybe if you want to grind some of that metal off, but maybe take a little of the cutting edge off. But that's just, hey, you do what you do, and that's just fine. 
I like the feel of this Corsair micarta. It's quite nice. And uh, you might be able to hear Bandit snoring, so you don't hear him barking, but uh, he's snoring down there on the uh, mat beside my table. I br decided to bring him downstairs because he was barking upstairs, and uh, I was thinking that that was going to be picked up by my microphone. So, Other than the fingerprints, see, look at those fingerprints. <laughs> it looks quite nice. Yep, I like this knife. We'll do the full review uh, at some point. I don't know exactly when. Oh, I just realized I forgot to talk about the price of this guy. Uh, this guy is $44.99. So it's three cents more than the Maguron. But again, you save 10% at White Mountain Knives, makes it $44.99. Again, a $45 knife. And finally, we've got a Kubi. Now the Kubi here, this is $56. Now most Kubi knives are listed at $56 to start with, uh, depending on where you go buying. If you go to kubiknife.com, uh, this knife is $70. But uh, there's a store called knifeglobal.com. They only sell Kubi knives. I believe they're a Kubi factory store. And they've got this model, the KU2, the KU342. And uh, they've got six or seven different ways, six ways plus one exclusive. And their exclusive is funky. It's got sort of a baby blue coated blade. And, you know, this greenish yellow handle with sort of an orangey reddish, you know, pivot pin. Uh, this guy's got Kubi on the blade, but they've been bringing it smaller lately. I don't know if they've been listening to us or not, but I really hope, I believe they have been. So Kubi right there on the main grind. We've got a black stonewash finish here. We've got thumb studs and AUS 10 steel. High flat grind. Drop point here. A little bit of jimping up on the spine. And yeah, I got too much oil in there when I put it back together, or maybe they did. I don't remember if I oiled it or not when I put it back together. But so you can see the dark, let me see, does this move? Yeah, see, that darkness doesn't move when the blade moves. So that's going to be oil residue between the G10, and this is a nice jade flat slab G10, and the blade. And if there's oil on the G10, it kind of makes it look dark. But this side doesn't have oil on it, and it doesn't look dark. So I'll have to take that apart and wipe that out, I guess. That could be my fault. Anyhow, liner lock again. Lockup is very nice. I like where the lockup focus down there. There you go. The lockup's at a good spot. We've got those bumps on the lock release. Easy to get your thumb in there and close the knife. Alignment right down the middle again. Oh, did I forget to show the alignment on this guy? It's very good as well. And it feels quite thin at the edge. I think this is going to be a really nice slicer. Pocket clip is right and left. Not a huge knife. Oh, I don't have a uh, measuring tape right here. I'll have to tell you on the screen if it's over three inches or under three inches. Decent action. There's a little bit of resistance in there. Not a lot. Very little. I can make it look like it's drop shutty. You know, that's just technique. So much of what you see on reviews is reviewer skill. You know, if you see them doing something. Uh, so, I don't know. Eventually, you have to come to the point where you pick reviewers that you trust and, you know, believe what they have to say. This has got pretty smooth. I don't remember if, I think it's uh, ceramic ball bearings, but I don't remember since, since it's been a couple of weeks. The jimping up there... Hey, yeah, that's nice. Using the flipper. Yep, that's nice. Yeah. Is that a finger? No, that's too small of a space to be a decent finger guard right there. Open pillar construction this time. Hourglass shape. So two of them had hourglass. Three to four different steels. Three liner locks and one access lock. I like this. $56. Take off 10% with coupon code CCE. That makes it $50.40. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was going to be reviewing some lower-priced knives again. 
especially since I had some knives that uh, were given to me by some manufacturers and they tend to give me the higher, not high price knives, but higher price knives than I usually review. So I wanted to get in some of the lower cost stuff. Like I said, I bought these. Uh, Amazon's got this as well for $56. So you pay $5.60 more than you would at White Mountain Knives. Uh, but White Mountain Knives has got this in two color codes. Whereas Knife Global, which is one of Kubi's websites, or KubiKnife.com, they've got it in six or seven different colors, depending on which store you go to. Remember, Knife Global's got that funky looking exclusive. Um, I don't know if I've got a, I don't think I've got an affiliate or referral plan for Knife Global, but I'll put the links down below to make it easy for you to get them. They ship pretty much anywhere in the world. Uh, by the way, White Mountain Knives ships to a lot of places too. It's not just an American store. That's just their predominant customer base is American, but they ship all, almost anywhere. You just have to pay for it. It's free to American addresses, but uh, I guess the continental United States, I don't know if it's all of them. If you're an American living in a place that's not, you know, part of the lower 49 or the lower upper 49, the North American 49, plus Alaska, I don't know. I think it's free shipping to every state, but if uh, you're a territory or something, I don't know if it's free shipping for you guys. So there you go. A lot of different ways to get this Kubi with AUS-10. Uh, we've got a bigger knife here. Let's put it right, now. try to put it in the middle of the screen this way. Line up those pivot pins. That's definitely a bigger knife. That's, that's over three inches. It definitely is over three inches. And then we got this Maguron uh, with another black blade, but that's not stonewashed. And we started off with this R-I-H-E right here and an axis lock. Let's line up those pivot pins right there. So there you go. Two black, a white, and a jade. I've got, I think, four more knives upstairs and I'll record that unboxing quite soon, hopefully. We'll see. Life sometimes gets in the way, doesn't it? So do you like any of these knives? Do you have any of these knives? Let me know down in the comments below. Again, congratulations to David L. in Colorado. Thank you to all of my 51 financial supporters. And thank you to every one of you who, you know, you hit the subscribe button. You've done that already. You hit like on the video if you like it. I'm not telling you to hit like if you don't like it. If you like it, hit like on it. Please leave a comment. That really does help. I appreciate it an awful lot. I read every comment eventually, usually within less than a week, usually within one or two days. But And I re respond to every intelligent comment or you know just saying hi or whatever. Uh, and I get very few bad comments that I need to ignore. You know, So that's the way it goes. Uh, YouTube does not post automatically comments with links in them or comments that it thinks is a link. So if you write a sentence, you end it in a period, and you start writing another sentence without a space, it's going to think that's a link, and it's not going to post it. So just be careful leaving spaces after the ends of sentences. I've noticed some people's sentences uh, have been done that way, and then I don't see that comment. Unless I go manually look for it, which I usually do about once a month. Anyhow, I'm starting to babble again. Thank you a lot for everything you guys do for me. Hopefully you appreciate what I do for you. Until next time, remember, always, cut towards your chum, not your thumb.